What is the best alternative to chlorine in a swimming pool? I hate this question. And the reality is, is that 99 times out of 100, you actually want chlorine. You just want to understand how to use it better. Most people do not understand how to use chlorine and how to manage chlorine-based swimming pools properly. And as a result, they can end up having things like a rash from a you know, poorly managed pH. And they can misattribute that to, oh, I'm, I'm, I have an allergy to chlorine. Chlorine allergy is exceedingly rare. So it's possible, but again, exceedingly rare. If you talk to pool owners, every second pool owner says they're allergic to chlorine and it simply can't be the case. And we know it's not the case. Combined chlorine from used chlorine or, or spent chlorine that has combined with organic debris or bacteria or some something like that, the, that is responsible for most of the red eyes. And when that level, when your combined chlorine level approaches one part per million or more, at that point, the water looks bad. It smells bad. It's irritating to the skin. And, you know, you could end up with a rash and red eyes. And this, the same goes for pH. If you don't manage your pH properly, some people are extremely sensitive to pH changes and you, you don't really appreciate it. You know, a pH of seven versus a pH of eight. What's the difference? Well, a pH of seven is 10 times more acidic than a pH of eight. When you say it like that, well, it actually kind of sounds like it's a big deal, and it is, because a lot of people definitely react to imbalances in, in pH, especially people with light hair and fair skin. They tend to react poorly to adverse pH in swimming pool water. And again, people will misattribute this to a problem with the chlorine, where in reality, the chlorine is the one thing that's keeping your water safe, and that is why we chose it for that job, and people like me speak so strongly about it. Like, it's really really important. And when you're looking for an alternative to chlorine, I mean, I spend my whole life studying this. I, I didn't just forget to look for alternatives to chlorine. There are very important reasons why you don't use alternatives. Let's talk about some of the alternatives. That's what you're here for. So I'll give you some of the alternatives. The first one would be, I'd say UV. A germicidal UV light is something that has the potential to keep water safe were it not for one single thing. The one thing that a UV light cannot do is it cannot protect me in the water from you swimming right next to me. Now that ability to protect the water from, you know, somebody from, you know, a couple of feet away, you have to have a residual layer of protection in the water waiting for bacteria or a foreign element in which to act on and a uv light can't do that it can only work once the water is eventually drawn through the filtration system and then passes in front of the light and then it does the job but where's the level of protection from me to you it doesn't exist and that's uh, that's actually a recurring theme that you'll hear a lot when you're talking about alternatives to chlorine in swimming pools because there's actually quite a few options that almost do the job but they fall short on this one thing. They lack the ability to hold a residual layer of protection within the water like chlorine can. Let's talk about another one. AOP is pretty popular, advanced oxidation process. It essentially is like ozone and UV put together on a lot of steroids and then times that by a million. That's what AOP is. It's incredibly reactive. It's the most reactive element, I believe, in the lower Earth's atmosphere. And it's the primary reason why our skies are clear when we look up. And you can harness that in use in swimming pools. And it works in the same way that UV does. And it works in the same way that ozone does and in that it oxidizes. Oxidation is one of the most powerful processes on the planet. Like if you take a can of Coca-Cola and throw it on the grass and come back a year later, look at it, all that color got bleached right out of there. That's oxidation. And it'll do that to pretty much anything on the planet if you give it enough time. So if you were to harness one of the most reactive elements in our in our entire world and then apply that to cleaning water, there is some pretty serious potential there. And I think in a few years time, if I remake a video like this, you might be hearing me say that really AOP is just it. That's all you need. At this point, the technology is too new for me to just jump in with completely other than to say it's very intriguing and it has a huge amount of potential. 
but it's still pretty new. It's still pretty expensive, and that makes it out of reach for the average person installing a swimming pool and looking for a chlorine alternative. Is a you know an expensive AOP system in the budget for you? Maybe, probably not. Um, let's talk about something more affordable. What about ozone? Like I mentioned that earlier, that that's an oxidizer as well, right? It it adds O3 to the water, and that will react with organic debris, but the re there's a lot of limitations to ozone. Like for one, it can cause damage to your swimming pool. If you were to let that ozone just travel back to your pool, it could bleach your liner or damage the underside of your pool cover because oxidation kills the bad stuff, but it also kills the good stuff too. So you have to control that ozone and give it a degassing chamber somewhere to release all that ozone safely, not going back into the swimming pool. So right away, that's a disadvantage is we've got to have a bunch of stuff going on there. But the amount of time that it takes for ozone to do its job is much, much slower than something like AOP. And as a result, there's limited potential to ozone systems. Like, yes, it works. The technology and theory is sound. The actual amount of ozone that makes its way into your swimming pool water, is it enough to make an appreciable difference to the average swimming pool? And the answer is no, and certainly not enough to work as a standalone system. Even as a peripheral-based system to supplement chlorine, an ozone system still isn't really as good in my mind as something like UV and, and definitely not AOP. AOP would be much better than an ozone system. So those are options that you can look at if you're looking to have an alternative to chlorine, though I strongly, strongly encourage you to continue to use chlorine. Maybe just learn a little bit more about how to properly manage it, and then you could strive to use as little as possible. And I'm totally on board with that project. You don't need five parts per million chlorine one would be enough, you know, the one thing that you don't have of is, you know, a lot of, of residual in the water. If you were to have a heavy rainstorm, you'd lose that one part per million of free chlorine you have. So I do encourage two parts per million of free chlorine in the water at all times, and then look to supplement with something like a UV system, or an AOP system, or even an ozone system. I think as, as a supplemental or a peripheral device, I think they're fantastic. And we already use those within the pool industry in some of the most high-risk environments like a children's splash pads. In a lot of areas, it's mandated that you have to have UV lights in addition to chlorinated water because it's highly effective. And UV is even effective in ways in which chlorine is not all that effective. Like one of the weakest links to chlorine is its inability to kill the parasite cryptosporidium. It can take 12 hours or more of very, very high chlorine levels to penetrate the outer shell of the cryptosporidium parasite, where something like ozone works much, much faster. Same with UV lights, much, much faster. So adding one of these peripheral systems to a chlorine-based pool enhances the level of protection that you have. When you attempt to skirt chlorine or use an alternative to chlorine, you're removing the most important layer of protection, the residual protection that exists within the water. And you'd be counting on waiting for the water to pass through a UV light or react with an ozone bubble. And we're just not there yet. In an open, unmanaged environment where ducks land in the pool or who knows what's going on in there, it's just not realistic at this point to try to run with just, you know, a system based in entirely on UV or let's talk about some of the other ones, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, mineral or ionizer systems. You see a lot of these on the market. They do work. The technology is sound. What they don't take into consideration is time scale. When you're in the water, in order to have residual protection, the free chlorine needs to act quickly. One part per million of free chlorine is going to kill pretty much anything in the water that's not supposed to be there in 60 seconds or less, save for cryptosporidium, which I was mentioning earlier. So that's pretty fast. It works really, really fast. So silvers, silver is a natural bacteria side, and silver is one of the components found in these mineralizers or mineral-based systems. So isn't that good? Isn't that just like a natural way to, to kill the bacteria? And yes, it is. There's there's It's sound reasoning and sound technology that works except for how much silver do you need to kill that same bacteria and at what time scale would that operate at well you can't measure the amount of silver in the water so that's a problem right there but what we know is that in the amount that exists in these mineral mineralizer systems the amount of silver is so low that it would take days weeks 
or even months to kill that same organic debris or same parasite that chlorine can kill in 60 seconds or less. Does that sound useful to you? Because it definitely doesn't sound useful to me. So there is some logic behind using these mineral-based systems, but I definitely don't agree with them. With the swimming pool industry, we teach that you want zero parts per million metals in the pool other than calcium. So the idea of putting metals like copper and silver into the pool on purpose, I just totally disagree with this. It's going to most likely result in staining. It's not going to achieve a standalone system like copper will reduce the amount of algae you have, but it's not enough on its own. And to what time scale does it work? And again, silver, the same thing. How much do you need and to what time scale would it work? And the answer to both of those is simply not satisfactory to use as a standalone system. And I guess the only other thing to mention would be like a, an H2O2 or peroxide based pool or any kind of oxidizer based pools. Because there's a few out there as well that use, um, I believe it's silver modified oxidizers that can have a short lived residual life within the water. So as I was saying, that's kind of like the big Achilles heel of chlorine is we don't have that residual layer of protection. Well, hey, you can actually modify an oxidizer and then potentially have a residual layer of protection and those systems do exist as well and then what we found out with those is that eventually you will end up with white water mold and every few years you need to completely empty the system go back to chlorine for a little while before you can go back to these modified oxidizers so again what might seem like you know the the silver bullet solution again turns out not to be there really just isn't a better solution than chlorine at this point and the best that you can hope to do as a pool owner what i tell all of my consulting clients is that you want to go with a traditional chlorine based system and at best at a peripheral system like ozone uv or e or aop to supplement that chlorine if you found this information helpful please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my youtube channel and you can check out my website swimmingpoolsteve.com